So my topic is SAT testing. Uh, the SAT is a standardized test that is used widely across the United States to evaluate high school students transitioning to university. Now, I was personally affected by the SAT because I did not score high enough to get accepted into the university of my choice, which is the University of California, Berkeley. This disadvantage does not only apply to myself, but applies to thousands of students um, and across the United States for a variety of reasons. So my proposition is that the SAT prevents deserving students from attending the university of their choice. And I'm going to prove that in three ways. My first claim is that the SAT exam discriminates against black and Latino students. My second claim is that the SAT is economically biased. And my third claim is that if we did not, that if we did not have the SAT, then the universities across the United States would have a greater racial diversity. So my first claim was that it discriminates against black and Latino students. According to a study done by The Atlantic, at any given poverty level, districts that have a higher proportion of white students receive a substantially higher amount of funding than districts that have more minority students. This means that no matter how rich or poor a district is, funding gaps existed solely based on the racial composition of the school. Just the increased presence of minority students actually deflated a district's funding level. According to the Brookings Academic Research Institution, among top scores and specifically the math section of the SAT, those scoring between 750 and 800, 60% are Asian, 33% are white, compared to 5% Latino and 2% black. Meanwhile, among those born between 300 and 350, 37% are Latino, 35% are black, and 21% are white, and only 6% are Asian. Psychologists Greg Walton and Stephen Spencer from Stanford University and the University of Waterloo found another factor that is detrimental to minority groups uh, SAT scores, specifically blacks and Hispanics, they found that stereotype threat, just the psychological aspect of knowing you belong to a specific minority group, can deter, deter uh, that individual's SAT score by about 40 points. Lastly, so statistics show that minority groups have a poor quality of education due to, the due to the schools they attend, thus resulting in lower SAT scores than those that live in wealthier areas. My second claim is that the SAT is economically biased. According to data from College Board, the, the organization that administers the SAT, family income has a significant effect on the results of a student's uh, test. The data shows that there are less students taking the exam from families of higher incomes, but yet they are performing considerably better. For example, College Board's 2013 demographic study showed that 16% of students with a family income of 20,000 to 40,000 scored a mean of 465. 482 and 455 on the critical reading, mathematics, and writing sections, respectively. While just 5% of test takers that came from a family income of 160,000 to 200,000 scored 539, 555, and 531, respectively. These statistics show that having more money correlates with the fact that these students have access to more resources, helpful resources. And by that, resources are defined as having access to SAT preparatory classes, having the opportunity to take the SAT multiple times, whereas students from lower income families are not having the access to the prep classes or the extra tests. Therefore, there's a disadvantage that these students face because they cannot afford to improve their test you know, by taking a class that prepares them to excel on the SAT or to improve their score over a multitude of tests. My last claim was that if we did not have the SAT, then universities across the US would have greater racial diversity. Statistics show that most colleges that require the SAT have significantly less racial diversity. According to PriceEconomics.com, an organization of writers, data scientists, analysts, and engineers, the racial diversity in universities across the U.S. vary. Top universities in America that require the SAT, such as Brigham Young University of Provo, the University of Alabama, and the University of Pittsburgh, have white student body populations of 70.6%, 63.6%, and 60.5% respectively. According to collegesimply.com, a college resource website, for each of these uh, universities from first to last, the average SAT scores for admissions are 1320, 1180, and 1335. And that is scaled on the most recent scaling of the SAT, which is up to 1600. So those scores fall into the above average range. 
So if we didn't have the SAT, that there would be a chance of having greater diversity in our universities across the US. In summary, I am advocating that the SAT pre uh, prevents deserving students from attending the university of their choice. And I proved that to you in three ways. The SAT discriminates against black and Latino students. The SAT is economically biased. And the SAT is a factor in preventing greater racial diversity in the universities across the United States. Thank you. It's like an echo from two days ago, isn't it? <laughs> Very familiar. Okay. The uh, proposition's clear. There's a good preview. That's fine. I do think one of the things that's missing <coughs> from your argument is a sense of what constitutes a deserving student. Uh, you know, if we have no discriminating standards whatsoever, we could get a lot of diversity. But is that what we're looking for? And is that really uh, what's uh, the outcome that we think the universities ought to have? That, you know, that people who are underqualified, uh, who don't particularly understand how to read, write, do math, uh, are going to institutions that they don't fit into or aren't qualified to be in. What I think you need is an explanation about what constitutes a deserving student, somebody who is capable of doing those things but has been prevented from getting the opportunity to do them by the test. That's the one part of the argument that I think is missing here. Otherwise, I thought it was very clearly set up. There's a good preview. Uh, the secondary claims are clearly identified. Uh, the idea that there's an influence because of, well the, fir well, the whole first point actually has less to do with the ethnicity of the people involved and more to do with the economics, and it just happens to be correlated with eth ethnicity. And so I think that that's, um, you know, I'm not sure why that's uh, differentiated in the, between that and the second point, which is a different kind of economic bias. I think you could probably find another way of expressing that. Uh, the diversity issue on the third point, um, I, again, there's not any explanation about why that's a desirable thing separate from uh, the issue of who is qualified to go to the schools. The um, testimony that you provide is uh, thin, but you do have good sources for the statistical information. I thought that that was very solid, and there's a lot of statistical information that you're talking about. There's a you do a very nice job presenting to the audience and speaking to us uh, directly, and you know, coming across as a credible uh, speaker on the issue. All right, thank you.